So next round of testing, we're going to run at 6,000 volts, 100 microsecond full width half height, microsecond rise, 2 ohm source impedance. When I ran my first shoot out of $50 meters, it came down to an Ampro AM510 and this Fluke 101, and the Ampro ended up getting damaged. <clears throat> the energy levels that we're running now, uh, voltage, the pulse width, it's all much higher than what I ran that final at. So the meters that survived this uh, round of testing here are actually all going to be very, very robust. It would have been very interesting to see if a Fluke 87 had even survived this test. This is a, it's a pretty big hit. You can see the number of meters that we've taken out. You can see our peak height now is about uh, 5.9 kV. This is the maximum of the generator. Just shy of 6 kV. Okay, the working meters. First one up, Radio Shack. It survived up to 5,000 volts so far. No problems at all. Everything's functional. Let's see how it does at 6,000 volts. It sounded like it did a little pop inside there. Looks like it came back. Reads DC fine. Yeah, that's it. Let's test out the Radio Shack and see if it still works. Unbelievable. Everything on this meter still works. No problems at all. <laughs> I forget what uh, 5KY said he paid for this. Uh, it was something cheap, under 30 bucks. I mean, that survived better than uh, Amprobe. I would have never guessed this. Never guessed it. This thing here, uh, it's definitely going to face the Fluke 101. But I think it's time for the next meter. Okay, next up is the Fluke 107.
Okay, let's go ahead and check it here. Okay, I've gone ahead and tested out the Fluke 107. It's 100% functional. It'll go on to face the Fluke 101. Next up is my favorite meter, the Bryman BM869S. Very nice meter. Even though the Radio Shack and the uh, Fluke 107 have survived this test so far, neither one of those meters are nearly as feature rich as what this Bryman is. People had said early on that the reason that the Fluke 101 had survived the initial testing was because it had no features. Yeah, I guess that's one way to look at it. I would have thought that Klein Tools meter that I tested, I think it even had less features than the Fluke 101. If that was the argument, it would have survived better than the Fluke 101 did, but it didn't. I think it really comes down to the individual companies and how well they design their products. All right, that's it. Let's go ahead and functional test him. We'll see if it's still okay. Well, 
I just finished running the Bryman. It passes. So that concludes our testing with the new generator. On the left here we have the Radio Shack. This Radio Shack doesn't have a part number, it just has a catalog number 2200087. To the right of that we have the Brahman BM869S and the Fluke 107. So these three meters have all survived everything I could put out with the new generator. We also have the Fluke 101, the Circuit Test DMR6550, and this is the Amprobe AM530. So the Amprobe and the Circuit Test were not able to be destroyed completely with the generator even at 6,000 volts. Both these meters still powered up, but this Amprobe really didn't have a whole lot wrong with it. So I ended up uh, taking this apart and you can see here I've replaced a Q9 it's an H1A transistor and I went ahead and aligned it so this meter actually works very well now yeah I probably won't do anything more with the meter um, I was just kinda curious as to what exactly was damaged with it this meter on the other hand is uh, damaged probably beyond repair I would say at this point though I'd say if you're looking to buy a new meter and you're looking for something that's very robust um, depending on what features you're looking for, these are very robust, regardless of if they pass the 13,000 volt test or not. So the next question we need to answer is, will any of these three meters here survive the transients that the original generator had put out? That generator will output a 13,000 volt transient with a 100 microsecond full width half height. So far to date, this Fluke 101 is the only meter that survived that test. That includes a Fluke 87V. That meter was damaged when I attempted to run it across that generator. If these three meters will pass that test, all three of these, I'm going to say, are more robust than that Fluke 87V was. And from a feature standpoint, this Bryman actually has more features than what the Fluke 87 does. And it costs about half, which is really what I think people are probably interested in is, can you buy... A different meter that's better than that 87V was. So I think we're going to find out here pretty shortly. The other wild card is this uh, Radio Shack. I don't think anybody expected this Radio Shack to survive as well as it has. You know, it just keeps hanging in there. Uh, it does reset. I'm surprised it uh, hasn't taken out the front end, but uh, it just keeps ticking. I don't think anybody questions that this uh, Fluke 107 will survive or not. I think we probably all assume it's going to. Um, it's probably, I would imagine, roughly the same type of front end design as what's on this Fluke 101. I haven't verified that. I've never had the Fluke 101 apart. So, but I think we still need to run the test and prove it out. So, that'll be in the next step. So stay tuned and uh, we'll see if we can uh, destroy any more of these or are we going to end up with uh, three meters that will hang in there with the Fluke 101. Till the next time. Later.